Welcome to Part 6 of the Guided Tour Series. In this section, we will define the system and its boundary. In order to do this, we need to identify the top-level components, or physical elements, their top-level functions, and any top-level inputs and outputs. To begin, we need to define the overall system context to determine what is inside and what is outside of our system. A component element of the type system is used to identify the system and capture the system level mission. A component is an abstract term that represents the hardware, software, people, or grouping thereof that performs a specific function or functions. We will create the component element of the type system with the element extractor because we can use text from the source document and save some typing. Open the element extractor window. Click on the Load Document button. Navigate to the Core 7 slash data slash samples folder. Locate the Autolink source document and double click to load. From the Class Field drop down list, select the component class. Enter Autolink System in the name field. Then enter sys.1 in the number field. Extract the second paragraph under scope into the description field. Extract the third paragraph under scope into the mission field. Set the type field to system. Next, we define a relationship by establishing that the component element is documented by the document element, which we had named Autolink System Requirements Document. Double click the Documented by Relationship to open the Edit Targets dialog. Double click Autolink System Requirements Document from the Possible Targets list to add it to the Targets pane. Click OK to close the Edit Targets dialog. Save the element in the repository by clicking the Create Element icon. Then close the Element Extractor window. External systems interact with the system element and are represented in Core's Integrated System Design Repository by the component class. We will create four physical component elements, Client, Emergency Response, Global Positioning System, and Vehicle. We will also create a logical component element called Autolink Context to provide a context to capture how our system interacts with other systems to achieve its objective. We will use the Project Explorer to create those elements since there is no data available regarding components to import from the source document. In the Project Explorer, double-click the component class. The New Component dialog prompts for the element name. Name the element Client and press the Enter key. Pause the video and use this process to create four more elements with the names listed on screen. Now we need to define the attributes and relationships of these elements. Pause the video and enter the attributes shown on screen for the Autolink context element. Hierarchies of components can be constructed using the built from relationship. We want to show that the Autolink context is built from the Autolink system and the four external systems, client, emergency response, global positioning system, and vehicle. When you want to relate two elements of the same class, you can drag and drop these elements onto each other. Core will then show you a dialog that allows you to select the desired relationship. This is particularly valuable when you are not sure what relationships are valid for the class. Click on Autolink System. Drag it onto Autolink Context and drop it there. Select Built From in the Relation Specification dialog and click OK. Now, 
pause the video and create Built From Relationships to the remaining targets on screen. To be thorough, you will want to complete the attribute fields for the remaining elements. We will use the Elements Table view to complete the element definitions. In the Project Explorer, click on the Elements Table icon to switch to the Element Table view. Then, pause the video and complete the element definitions using the table on screen. Don't forget to add a column for the type class. To see the decomposition of the Autolink context component element, we can view either a physical hierarchy or a block definition diagram. Earlier, we used the hierarchy diagram to show traceability, so this time let's select the block definition diagram. First, switch back to Element Browser view by clicking on the Element Browser icon. Then, select the component Autolink context element. Click the Structure Block Definition Diagram icon. By default, the Block Definition Diagram is configured to show the operations and values in addition to the element name. As with all diagrams in Core, you can adjust the node representation to display as much or as little information as desired by changing the diagram options and the icon representation. In the case of block definition diagrams, teams often display some combination of operations, receptions, parts, ports, and values depending on the maturity of the model and the specific interest. We have defined our document, our requirements, our system component, and the context and external components. Now we need to add some functions to describe what our system is to do. Mathematically, a function accepts one or more inputs and transforms them into outputs. Let's create the top-level function for our system, our context, and each of the external systems. With any system, its top-level function represents the total functionality of the system and its decomposition is represented by its behavioral structure. First, close the structure block diagram. Then, from the Project Explorer, double-click the Function class to open the new function dialog. Type the name, perform Autolink functions, and press Enter. When you create a new element, the property sheet is automatically displayed. Give the element the number 0. Now pause the video and type a description for this function in the description field as shown on screen. Pausing the video again, create five additional functions named and numbered as detailed on screen. We will now allocate the root functions to the components that perform them. This is accomplished by establishing an allocated to relationship. In the Project Explorer, select the function element Autolink Functional Context. Double click the relationship Allocated To, opening an Edit Targets dialog. Double click the possible target C, Autolink Context, to add it to the Targets pane. Click OK. In the Targets and Attributes pane, click the plus sign next to the component to display the relationship attribute. Double click on Behavior Type Atomic. From the Edit Behavior Type Attribute dialog, select Integrated Root from the drop down and click OK. Now, allocate the other four external root functions to their respective component elements in the same way. Pause the video and use the table on screen as your guide. In each case, identify the behavior type as integrated root. This concludes Part 6 of the Guided Tour. Part 7 will begin definition of the behavior model. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know.
email me at support at vitechcorp.com.